Hello everyone and welcome to another high elo game of Age of Empires today. I hope everyone who can is enjoying the total solar eclipse without looking directly at it since that can cause permanent eye damage which means you won't be able to enjoy watching any more games of Age of Empires like the one we're about to watch where Hera playing as the Dravidians in blue gets ready to take on Classic Pro playing as the Armenians in yellow. Now, while the players heard their herdables explore their immediate surroundings and try to get their butts up to Feudal Age ASAP, good time for us to take a look at the Civ matchup we'll be watching today because there are actually a few cool similarities between these civilizations. Not that on the face of it, you would imagine a lot of similarities, but I feel like there are a few. The Dravidians are a civilization that, like the Armenians, focuses on their infantry. To start with, all barracks technologies are half price, and all of their infantry units can be upgraded to ignore enemy armor, essentially turning Dravidian infantry into Lithuanian Lechai, which is great because the unique unit of the Dravidians is the Urumi Swordsman, a medium infantry unit that gets a massive attack boost every 20 or 24 seconds, and that attack boost, that charge attack, it does trample damage. Now, to support its infantry on the field of battle, all Dravidian siege units cost a third less wood, their cavalry also benefits from Woot's Steel, which is the upgrade that turns their uh, infantry into Lithuanian Lechai. Although, remember, the Dravidians, their uh, stable line, probably, possibly the worst one in the game. If it's not the worst, it's definitely top two or three. It is notoriously bad. Dravidian Skirmishers, their elephant archers, do attack 25% faster, and all of their elephant units can be upgraded to regenerate health. Now, to support their military, Dravidian fishermen do carry a little bit of extra seafood. I'm looking out on the map. Well, there you go. We do have a little bit of seafood today, some box turtles. So if Hera decides to decimate, exterminate the population of box turtles, well, his fishermen are going to carry 15 extra turtles or turtle legs or turtle shells or whatever, 15 extra units of food. Now, the Dravidians, every time they go up in age, they automatically get 200 wood for free. So I'm hoping I'll remember to take a look at the top left of our screen when he goes from Dark Age to Feudal. And that extra wood always does help out in the early stages of the game when villager allocation management is super essential. Or in the mid to late stages of the game when you want to train some of that discounted siege. Now, pivoting to the south, we've got the Armenians also, as I mentioned, an infantry civilization. All of their infantry units come with extra line of sight, are available an age earlier, which means Armenians actually have access to spearmen in the Dark Age, long swordsmen and pikemen in feudal, and two-handed swordsmen, champions, and halberdiers in Castle Age. Now, these same infantry units, except for the spearmen line, can be upgraded to get a big boost to their HP, plus 38 extra HP. I, I think I said the previous cast... When I was uh, discussing the mine, I said HP points, which makes no sense because I think the P in HP stands for points. In any event, Ferritors, the name of the upgrade, does give their infantry 30 extra hit points. Their first unique unit is the Warrior Priest, a unit that blurs the line between Man of War and Man of the Cloth, being an infantry unit that can actually heal friendly units and also gather relics. Now, to support their slower-moving bipedal army on the battlefield, the Armenians can also feel the second unique unit, the Composite Bowman, this is a foot archer whose attack actually ignores the armor of all land units except for siege. So there come the similarities. Two infantry civilizations, two civilizations with access to one, I guess, a unit, one, a technology that allows them to ignore armor, uh, one with uh, infantry and their really, really shitty cavalry, <laughs> one with a foot archer. But we'll see how these similarities come into play. Lastly, to, for the Armenians. To help them get their military industrial complex up and running as fast as possible, their first fortified church does come with a free relic, which does introduce a sixth relic into the game uh, on most standard maps that come with only five relics. Their mule carts are 25% cheaper and all mule cart technologies are 40% more effective, which means more productive Armenian miners and lumberjacks. So those are the two civilizations. I hope I didn't interrupt myself too many times. Uh, to make that about as unclear and muddy as possible. But like I said, some very interesting similarities between these two civilizations. The Armenians and the Dravidians both have a pristine infantry line. And by that, I mean access to all non-unique upgrades available in the game, with the exception, of course, of the Dravidians having Woot Steel, which is a unique upgrade that turns their infantry into Lechai, ignoring armor. Hera off the back of 19 villagers is already heading up, but he is 50 seconds behind his opponent, who 
two with two fewer villagers has already rushed his way up to feudal and is now getting a stable up let's take a look at the bases see where the players have spawned because i'm looking at the mini map these look like pretty uh pretty open bases for both players we've got a patch of gold primary off to the side primary stone off to the other side okay so both primary resources kind of not on the attack path but not really secure we've got the additional gold both additional gold and additional stone in the very forward position here for classic bro so not a good base at all when it comes to location of resources forests also not kind of uh, very helpful but he does have a nice forest here to the back being in a bit of a corner spawn position always comes with a few extra resources Hera, primary gold very exposed to the front primary stone secure to the back not terrible and then additional stone off to the left and additional gold off to the right his resources are in a little bit of a better position but look at his base completely open on the full forward attack at least classic pro has a bit of a flanking forest here to the left whereas Hera has this forest to the right but that's not really on the attack path is it Oh man, both of these bases, as I mentioned, just even looking at the minimap, you can tell they are very open. And so it'll be very interesting. Both of them kind of uh, <laughs> kind of screwed when it came to this map generation. Hera's already starting to wall off his base as is Classic Pro, who has a stable, but no secondary structure from Feudal Age just yet. Hera also with a stable. At this point, when you're training just basic scouts... Uh, the Dravidians are about as good as uh, anyone else, except, of course, they're missing bloodlines. So, not that you really necessarily see bloodlines in Feudal Age, except if you were to watch the game yesterday, you will have seen bloodlines in Feudal Age. Do you, uh, I don't think the <laughs> I don't think the Dravidians even get a, a husbandry, actually. So, beyond Feudal Age, I really don't expect to see any more of these scout units. I really, really don't expect... I mean, they do have light cavalry, but no bloodlines, no husbandry. The last armor upgrade is missing. So, like I mentioned, I'm not sure if it's the worst or if it's one of the worst. doesn't really matter. You never really want to be at the bottom three of the pile anyway. Hera here has gotten one kill. So, does draw first blood as he is creating... Ooh, not every day we see Hera do something like this. This is uh, very reminiscent of a Mr. Yo-style enclave that he's walling himself off a nice big chicken mcnugget where he's going to have available to him stone and gold but when you put gold as part of your wall off it is very susceptible to ranged units not that our armenian is you know training any ranged units at the moment but i'm sure once he sees that this wall off incorporates that gold ooh, hero loses a villager very sour there We'll see what kind of shenanigans Classic Pro gets up to. For now, he's trying to get the high ground on Hera's scouts. Does get the high ground. Guns down a scout, and all of a sudden, Hera's killie disappears. And there's another villager here. Ooh, <laughs> so much maneuvering. Classic Pro takes a kill lead 2-1. to one And kills the first villager of the game. What's the HP on his scouts? So oh, he's got to be careful. Ooh, I keep saying ooh, 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 like, a, uh, like I'm a cartoon character. He's going to be trapped in here once this palisade completes. And it completes. Uh, I don't... Does Cla <laughs> does he know he's trapped? He must know he's trapped in here. And that's all she wrote. There's an archer. I, I figured he would train an archer once he saw this. And once he saw the berries were this close. And once he saw that Hera is walling himself in. And therefore, really, without having to destroy his own wall off, can't really access any more wood. So he's got one... And, I mean, this is just ugly. Where do you even jack lumber here? I guess on the northwestern portion of it? That is a very ugly thing to... I am surprised Harry didn't extend his wall off this way to at least give him some more surface area. But in any event, we've got a, ourselves another brawl. A second villager falls for our Dravidian. But he manages to clean up almost the entirety of Classic Pro's offensive capabilities. And now with two more swipes of that... Sword down goes the last of the expeditionary force here. Hera firmly taking the kill lead 8-4, to four, but he's lost two villagers. That's why Classic Pro's at 35, Hera's at 33. Hera also having a lot more idle time. And when I say a lot more, I mean a few seconds more. Archers get caught out in the middle of the map. One Spearman does manage to take down. Is that three? I think the Archers got one of them. And the Spearman got two. Am I... Am I or am I... Uh, 
No, they got one. Okay. So all of a sudden, Killeed has been equal, equal, the uh, brought to par, made equal. Classic Row, by the way, I thought he was going to wall his base off as well, but for now, he's not really doing that much of a wall off. So both players, I mean, there's risks, there's pluses and minuses to everything in Age of Empires, just like everything in real life. I mean, if you wall yourself off like this, you know, your opponent can very easily surround you and, oh man... Hera preemptively puts a uh, a tower here, but <laughs> Classic Bro just inserts himself into the murder hole. I'm surprised the tower can't reach this one archer. It looks like he's completely outside the murder hole radius. Okay. We'll keep an eye on those archers. Will they take down the tower, or will they get taken down themselves? As Hera now gets trapped. Uh-oh. rut -row. He's trapped in here with an archer, a spearman. I think the... Oh, the spearman got the kill. Every time he pokes and prod, it's 18 more HP that's reduced, taken down. No! No, we opened it up for Hera. After all of that, <laughs> Classic Pro shows Hera the way out. I'm surprised none of these villagers are trying to create any kind of wall. Where are these guys going? Okay, they've got axes in their hands. So now they are going to be lumberjacks, and Hera gets the hell out of here. Okay, so lost the scout. Not the end of the world. Tower, HP has been brought down. About 15%. Again, I'm surprised that this one archer... It really does look like he's completely outside the radius, so I'm not sure why the blue tower is not attacking him. Will Hera try to to flank and rear end these guys? Both of them are heading up to Castle Age. Hera is still down two villagers. He's down eight army count. And still safe and secure inside his chicken nugget, although this is... Uh, this is reminding me of grade uh, 11, grade 12 biology. You know, when you uh, open a... In high school, you open up a textbook and you learn about the inside of the cells. You've got the mitochondria. You've got all the bibbly bobbly boops and the gibbity gobbity boops. I don't know. I don't remember anything from grade 11 biology. It wasn't exactly... So the sciences were not my strong suit. <laughs> As you can imagine by the fact that I just made up a bunch of nonsensical words to describe. I don't even know if the mitochondria... I, I, I don't even remember what the hell the mitochondria is. I just remember that it's a word related to the components of a cell. I'm sure there are a lot smarter people watching these uh, these games that know all of this stuff. But that's what it kind of looks like to me. A cell. I mean, naturally, to me, initially, it looks like a chicken nugget because, you know, what doesn't look like a chicken nugget to somebody who loves chicken nuggets? Archer is going to be a very annoying in 10 seconds. They're going to be crossbows with an extra attack and range. Now they're shooing away. Hera has to... I, I'm surprised it took Classic Pro 22 minutes, by the way, to lame this one forest. Okay. I, there are two crossbows in here. First of all, one crossbow is not shooting. Second of all, the spearman is positioned. He should be inside attacking this tower. Hera tries to create a bit of an extended wall off by deleting his own palisades. Gets one town center up, but it looks like the crossbows have nullified. They do have one kill. Not a uh, not a villager, though. There's the villager kill as a classic pro raises the kill count of villagers to four nothing. Hera's still circling here with these two injured scouts. He's brought four more. So, of course, I said I don't expect to see Dravidian Cavalry beyond Feudal Age. So, of course, Hera builds Dravidian Cavalry. Although, I think I did mention Light Cab being decent. I shouldn't say decent. Less shitty at this stage of the game. Scorpions are now out. Some of them to shoot away. Ooh, does get the Spearman who stops to smell this uh, dead grass for some reason. Crossbows now have racked up three kills. Two of them economic. And there go the four total villager kills of Classic Pro, who is now having to contend with Hera's incursion. But remember the Armenians, their first fortified church comes with a free relic. And if you're not familiar with how fortified churches work, every relic you put inside adds an arrow. And the villagers that garrison inside add as many arrows as they would to a town center. So one relic alone means one arrow, which is why Hera now has to get the hell out of here. Even though I think he could have stayed around a little bit. To maybe try to snipe the monk. The tower attackers have been pushed back. It looks like another spearman lying face down in the dirt. Crossbows still with their three kills. Okay, so Hera's use of siege has saved his primary gold. 
He is now mining safely his secondary gold with a third town center. Man, does it help to get 200 wood. There's a lot of really cool features and bonuses. I like the Ethiopian where you get 100 food and 100 gold for free on a closed map. If you skip loom, basically means you don't need gold miners to go up to Castle Age. You guys start with 100 gold, then you get another 100 when you go to Feudal. You get 200 Bob's your uncle. I also think the Dravidian one is pretty bonkers too because this is now 400 extra wood that our Dravidian got, who, by the way, is housed. Not something you see every day, Hera getting housed, but uh, he's being housed for a while. He's now down four villagers, the same... Uh, actually, no, he's managed to kill one villager on the other side of the map as well. I guess being housed has allowed him... And now he's down five villagers. He's down massively in army supply as well. Our Armenian still just has the one relic he's got here. He's training monks. It's interesting. Usually, lately, with the Armenians, you see warrior priests. They're just so good at taking relics. They're just such a badass unit in those early stages of the game. Beautiful splits by Hera. Unfortunately, doesn't save him from the crossbows. Everyone wants a piece of this cavalry unit, and everyone is failing miserably. Holy moly, he's got the entirety of the Armenian nation chasing him down. Spearman, crossbow, mangonel, monk. And he managed and now Tony the Tiger. And he manages to escape this. Uh, oh man. Talk about Disney-esque. Horses, Ibex, deer, a tiger. Literally the food pyramid here with the one apex predator. But holy moly, does he escape with three HP. Which basically means unless this monk here to the top heals him, he's basically gonna die any second now. I mean, this spearman, look at look at the horse and the ibex trying to warn the spearman, hey, you're being attacked. What was the name of the bad guy, the Bengali uh, tiger from um, Jungle Book? The Disney uh, the Disney cartoon. Oh, look at Arrow with the fancy maneuvers. He does ultimately lose that one scout with a 3 HP, I believe. We'll get a Mangonel, but loses his entire cavalry force for it and a Scorpion. And a Mangonel of his own? Oh, no. I mean, that initially looked very good whenever you're trading out trash units for Siege. Why the hell not? Do it all the live long day, but that <laughs> quickly spiraled out of control there for Hera, and he lost a whole bunch more than he probably intended to. And what is going on? Classic bro. You are patrolling here. Oh, <laughs> flattened. How many kills does he have? Six. I think I just heard the spearman die. Oh, I was focusing on the spearman. I missed the uh, pancaking. Will we see another one? Nope, Hera loses his mangonel. I'm surprised the one on the high ground got uh, destroyed. Usually they can take a punch. They can take a volley because they take less damage with that high ground advantage. But I guess it must have been a bit injured from before. No villager here to repair it. First Armenian castle is up. First Dravidian castle going up. Oh, <gasps> Are you guys seeing what I'm seeing at the top of our screen? Elephant archer? <laughs> the Dravidian elephant archers. They fire when fully upgraded as fast as a freaking Mangadai. And they have, what, five times the HP? Let's see it. For now, we're only seeing two, and they are still hidden garrison, so I may be getting excited for nothing. Ooh, Classic Bro does catch out these villagers. Here is only at 55% completion. Now he's going to reveal his elephant. He's going to bring forth the Chunky Boy with the crazy HP. Let the crossbows chew on that one while the villagers complete the castle. Does manage to gun down Classic Pro's Mangonel as well. So this castle will go up thanks to the presence of two of these elephant archers, which on their own have been enough to shoo away 14 crossbows since one of them died over here. And Hera, I mean, it's an interesting location for a castle, definitely. It doesn't really secure any major resources. There's plenty of high ground around here. I mean, a treb here for yellow is going to cause damage to that. So I'm not too sure why this location. Why not a little bit to the right? You have even higher ground and you protect the gold. And your town center, by the way. Our Dravidian going up to one, two, three, four town centers. Hera's already at four. And here come the composite bowmen. Here they come. Remember, they ignore armor of every land unit except siege. So chasing into this Mangonel is uh, not very advisable. And Hera is doubling down on Elephant Archers. He's going up to six. 
Let's freaking see it. Let's freaking go. As both players are now expanding to the left side of the map, Hera with a spine of spotting houses and an outpost. Our Dravidian heading forward to put an outpost up of his own. I'm not too sure this archer play out of our Dravidian. By the way, look at their HP. Ugh, it's down like 40%. I'm not sure you're going to be able to beat elephant archers with these very... I mean, sure, the Composite Bowman ignores armor, but that means it still just does 6 damage to a 230 HP unit. That being said, Classic Pro, all the while while I've been fanboying out on the Elephant Archer discussing a bunch of nonsense about spotting houses, he's 40 seconds away from Imperial. Hera just now clicks up. So our Armenian is going to have Elite Skirmishers and a 2-minute advantage. He's going to have one less Mangonel because Hera just gunned that guy down. He is picking off the weaker ones, but oh man, the chunkiness of the elephant archer, just all of the elephant units in general just means they are here for a long, long time. What's the point of this? Uh, was he trying to blow? <laughs> was Hera trying to trap the Dravidian out of his own base here? It kind of looks like it, but instead he loses his villager. Okay, but he gets a crossbow in exchange at this point with 126 villagers. I don't think he minds losing one or two over here, over there, over everywhere. And a second castle going up. Ooh, we've got a battle of villagers here. Blue says, you're not building an outpost on my farm. This is my land. You are not getting an easement on it. I am not allowing you to egress and ingress all over my farm. Archers are doing a surprisingly better than I thought they would right up until the moment they get flattened. Will he get the last one? No! The last one survives with 10 HP Hera desperately. If he's going to go our uh, elephants, he desperately needs medical core. It is a castle age upgrade. It is redonkulously cheap. I think only 200 gold and it will allow his elephants to regenerate their HP. Where are the villager? There he is. Oh, he killed him. Hera's villager. Oh, it took no damage. Okay, so <laughs> Classic Pro's villager just basically took it. He was the uh, sub in that relationship to Hera's Dom villager. To put it in a language that some people will uh, will appreciate a little bit more. Elephants take a bit of a weird path to go home. They do some sightseeing, but ultimately get a bunch of arrows filled, pumped into their guts, and there's medical core. So now the elephants are basically uh, Viking berserkers, pole villagers. They are going to regenerate HP, and they're going to get chemistry. Both players are in Imperial. Classic Pro has used his time advantage well, going up to three trebs. Hera doesn't even have a single one out yet. And here we go. Why is he on the low ground when Hera's castle? Why, why not place them here? Maybe I'm missing something. Maybe here would be too exposed. In uh, three seconds, we're getting elite composite bowmen. Hera puts up a castle all the way to the left. So both players have spotting on the left side of the map. Hera, let's see his vision. Okay, not terrible. Sees a lot. Yellow as well. And has a monk over here. What is the relic count? Five to one for our Armenian. Look at the relic gold. He's got 1,300 extra relic gold. And with it, he is training skirmishers. Okay. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Oh, one armored elephant waddles very slowly here. The sheer volume of archer units is going to be enough to take him down before he gets to the trebs, which are now numbered four to Hera's two. The last thing Hera wants to be doing, though, is buying stone right now. Bought stone, bought stone, sold wood, sold food. The last thing you want when you're trying to get a death ball of elephant archers is to spend your resources defending a castle which is for sure going to fall in the next two volleys, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, that was the first and the second one. Now the next four balls will definitely... Yeah, these two. One. Oh! Oh, look at that! Maybe three volleys. Maybe not. That is a long-lasting castle. Holy moly! No, it ultimately does fall. Okay. But look at the elephant damage here. You know what? A mixed blessing here for both players. Hera now has no more need to sell resources, which means he can upgrade these elephants even more. He needs the last armor upgrades. He needs the elite upgrade. And now our Armenian can focus on other things. So kind of a win-win here with that castle going down. I really don't think Hera needed that castle at all. It doesn't really look like our Armenian is pressing the issue at the moment. And there's the elite elephant archer upgrade. 
And see, I don't think he would have gotten that if he had to spend all his resources getting more stone to defend that one castle. Where are these uh, composite bowmen going? Who are they trying to lure the bombard cannons into the uh, castle range? Okay, Harris says you took down one of my castles. I'm going to try to take down one of yours. In 30 seconds, these archers are going to be elite. They still are missing the final armor upgrade. They do regenerate HP, and there is a monk to the back, which means look at that 91, 98, 90, blah, 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 going up, 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 up. The longer Hera can keep these guys alive, the more powerful they become. They're just going to just stay alive. He's got to find a way, Classic Pro, to deal with these four Bombard Cannons, though. He does not really have any quick moving units. Oh, he's getting ferreters. We're going to get. Oh, and he's going. Uh, he's upgrading his militia line. How many barracks behind this? <laughs> so only seven. OK, only seven. Look at his resources. Are we going to get to see 100 HP champions? Uh, we've seen that army composition of. Oh, my God. By the way. Uh, 20 th sorry 33 34 <laughs> elite elephant archers Hera is now firmly in death ball territory I was gonna say we've seen the Armenian army composition of elite composite bowmen and 100 HP ferreters champions absolutely wreck the Berbers and their quick cavalry let's see how well it does yeah there we go champion let's see how well it does against these elephants that have 10 thousand hp I, I, i'll repeat that that's a one with four zeros after it Ten thousand hp castle is being repaired now it's yellow who has to waste his stone repairing a castle elephants don't care they move into the castle attack they know it's going to go down any second will the trebs get any bombards they miss entirely and down goes the castle the armenian army has to get the hell out of here Armenian still has an equal amount or the same number of army count, but that's a misleading stat because now there's <laughs> 39, 11,000 HP of elephants here. And here come the champions. All I hear in my mind right now is Freddie Mercury singing. We are the champions as they do nothing accomplish nothing did i just see two elephants die three four that was an absolute terrible engagement for our armenian what are the upgrades on these champions they can't possibly be fully no they're not they are still missing blast furnace which i think he realized after that engagement is now getting it oh that is the last upgrade you want to have to wait for that takes a minute and 40 seconds which means Hera's is going to be shelling away at this castle luckily for classic pro it is on the high ground Anything else going on around the map? Another castle being brought forth. He's going to try to lame the stone. But our Armenian is at 615 stone and falling rapidly as he continues to repair. What do we do? Do we go composite bowmen or do we go skirmishers? Because the elephant, if I'm not mistaken, they have negative cavalry archer armor, negative four. Okay, forget that for a second. We have round two. Oh, the bombards are just killing all of these skirmishers but look at this three champions have closed in on the bombard cannons they uh, so far they're not getting a single one. Oh my god they die get converted and the elephants are still here the count has been no lowered to 30 so nine elephants have died castle is at 100 percent though so that attack did give classic pro an opportunity to get his castle back up but now he's out of food still has a decent gold count still has a decent stone count has been pushed off of here Oh, the villager. <laughs> it looks like the villagers tried to take matters into their own hands. Hera just sent them to die. Is he repairing that treb? Yeah, of course he's repairing the treb. So Hera's castle is now in trouble. He moves forward villagers to repair it. Stone being wasted for everyone. Hera buying stone. Class Bro selling food. 300 food for 42 gold is about as shitty as you can possibly get. Both players are capped out. 200 population both at the almost exact same villager exact same army count let's freaking go let's see it with gambesons these champions should be able to close in without dying the question is what are they going to do once they close in 17 attack elephants got three melee armor so 14 damage literally 20 champions needed to surround an elephant to kill it 
Bombards are re have renewed their attack, their siege of the center castle here. What's happening on the left? This one monk that's been standing here for about a thousand years finally gets taken out by a mob of angry peasants. And Hera's starting, <laughs> starting to mix in light cavalry. Well, there you go. I said I didn't expect to see Dravidian cavalry beyond feudal age. And twice now, Hera has proven me, uh, made me look like a damn fool. But man, our Armenian, where is your army? Where is your army? The last thing you want to do now is have to deal with Hera's multi-pronged attacks. One elephant archer says, you know what? I don't really want to kill military. I lust for civilian blood. As he moves down south to kill a villager or two. Seven bombard cannons. Here come the elite, the composite bowmen. They're going to the left. They're going to hang, hang out with Ibex at the moment. I like that classic pro staying on the high ground. Fantastic move. And as I was mentioning, the negative armor, negative four of a Cav Archer armor does mean that this bonus of plus two does six extra damage to an elephant. The way the developers, I guess, even things up when a unit has ridiculous 280 HP. I mean, this has just been a headbutting in the center of the map kind of game for the last 30 minutes, which is uh, not unexpected with uh, these two civilizations. Not exactly super duper light on their feet, massive amounts of raiding units. He's going after the Bombard Cannons, his classic pro. I don't know what the hell that volley was. What are you? Okay, he's attacking an elephant. Castle still standing. These Bombards are just non-stop. Seven have become five, so he has gotten two. But now Hera, twice the army counts economic population identical what's happening here to the north it looks like Hera's castle did fall which means the stone can be mined yet again by our Armenian okay but he just says enough's enough there's nothing that I've been throwing at you my castle is finally down and with that castle he's got nothing left but the one castle to the right and that is a long long road from these elephant archers so that's going to provide zero defense here now I think probably if Hera had just brought these elephant archers maybe classic pro would have stayed a bit longer what the hell are you doing why are you cowering behind a bunch of mule carts and skirmishers go fire your fiery balls at the bbc's but i think if the bbc's weren't here classic pro may have continued to fight on but with the destructive power of this bbc and it's what is it 200 yeah 200 attack bonus against buildings these barracks are going to disappear in the blink of an eye our armenian has 800 wood left not that he needs wood to train uh, champions, but he is still going skirmishers. So I'm not too sure what the Armenian should have done here against these elephant archers. Let me know in the comments. They don't exactly get siege onagers, which means even with basic onagers, they're need to, they're going to have to get a lot of good shots in. I mean, a siege onager, you do you get three or four of them, you land one big shot here in the middle, and all you know eight, nine, ten of these elephants die. But with a basic onager. I don't know if that's going to do as much damage as a Siege on a journey. I don't really know what the Armenians have here that they can... Uh, if only their halberdiers came with the Ferders upgrade and got 30 extra HP. But it does not. It only applies to their militia line, their... Uh, what, what is it called? The Warrior Priest. And ultimately, just what a fun game. I, both players expanding Hera to the left of the map, Classic Pro to the right of the map. Both of them ending the game with 141 142 villagers but ultimately how many kills do we think on these elephant archers uh i'm gonna go ahead and say 70. <laughs> oh my god sorry I didn't, I didn't mean to laugh in your ear man has this been a game of the wrong calls for me but look at the battlefield look at how many dead bodies each one of these uh shirts these vests or whatever the hell the champions wear is a dead champion I don't know what the blue is. It's a mixture of light cavalry units and elephants. I thought 70. <laughs> Hera says, hold my beer, bro. 70. It's 140. Holy moly. Hera, 420 <laughs> kills to 160. Well, there you go. This is basically very indicative of the game we saw. One player going for ridiculous trash units with 35 HP before the introduction of the champion, of course. Another going for a ridiculously chunky unit of 280 HP. And that's why the kill count is 160 to 428. I mean, in terms of total resources, I'll take a look. I wonder if that's a statistic. But both of them have killed not, not the highest number of civilian kills. So I guess they kind of had a gentleman's agreement that we're not going to kill each other's economy this game, even though it looks like Classic Pro tried 
something a little cheeky and sneaky. The Zappo is never really going up. So that's five stone that he could have recovered and used to, uh, I guess, repair this castle. Yes. But literally, as the castle falls to the ground, he taps out. He realizes that now all of his industrial complex is military industrial complex that is, is now in jeopardy. And on top of that, it's not like Hera's army is over here. Hera's army is in the middle of his military industrial complex, which means he's got one annoying choice left to him, which is as the you train champions, keep them garrisoned inside the barracks. And then hopefully you can pop out 15 or 20 or 25 by the time one or two of these barracks falls. Maybe Hera takes the bait and goes after the archery range, even though nothing's coming out of there yet. But in the meantime, let your skirmishers do the talking for you. Let your champion count accumulate. But that is an absolute shitty position to be in for Classic Pro. And I think he realizes that, that his Western Empire is about to fall. With that, the southern portion will fall, and then Hera will just move forward. He's already gotten control of the stone, which means our Armenian can't repair anything castle-related. I guess an easy way of saying that is he couldn't possibly repair his castle anymore unless he bought the stone for it. And yeah, I think all of that kind of adds up to a totality of a GG Hera with 90 cat light cap. Interesting. I thought for sure more elephants as usual. Peak APM towards the end of the game, two to 300. Classic pro. Whoa, look at that. 30 seconds ago was microing his butt off. I guess trying to save the castle, control the villagers, control the military. Again, a little disappointed that these Trebs are back here. Is it better to GG with Trebs that are alive or is it better for them to die in glory and try to at least kill one or two of these bombard cannons. I guess we'll never know as they continue to cower behind here. Um, let's take a look at the stats and see whether or not the economies were any. Wow. I mean, if you take away the relic gold, which again, always the Armenians introduce that new factor into the game of a sixth relic. But look at that. If you take away the 3000 difference in gold, you essentially get the exact same economies. You remove 500 from here and 3,500 from here. There's less than a thousand resource difference. Massively identical economies. A little bit more wood, a lot more gold, uh, thanks to the relics, and a little bit, an extra castle's worth of stone for Armenian. Hera, for his part, a lot more food. Let's take a look. Conversions not really playing a role. Where is, uh, I, there must be a, some statistic that allows you to see the value of the armies that were killed. Oh my goodness, look at all this. I should probably learn uh, Capture Age at some point. Maybe uh, maybe somebody from Capture Age can tell me <laughs> what all these things mean. Although I think they're, uh, they've are they got tutorials and stuff. But in any event, holy moly. You always want to see it, at least I do, the elephants. But you almost never see it. And I'm glad we got to see fully upgraded Dravidian elephants firing. Look at that, seconds between attack 1.4. Like I said, Mangadai level speed on a unit that has 280 HP and a longbow level attack. So not the highest attack, but 11 is still good for an archer, especially an archer with 280 HP. And Classic Pro threw army after army after army at this ball of regenerating elephants, tried to snipe the Bombard Cannons, did a good job lowering the count from seven to five, was chasing a few over here, but the monk converted a third of his champions. The other two died. Just couldn't dislodge this army, and that's what happens when you let your opponent get a death ball. And that is exactly why it's called a death ball, a wrecking ball, because it's just going to punch you and you're just going to collapse your bones broken, bloodied on the floor, much like this one skirmisher whose pain is over. He is now in Nirvana. The misery of life is over for him. He has attained peace, and it is our Dravidian who gave him that peace and who is victorious, but GG to both players. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips and make sure to subscribe and enable notifications so that you're notified of my latest uploads.